In this video, I'll show you how to create this rock, paper, scissors game using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And the way this game works is, you play it against the computer, you have three choices. After you pick one, computer also randomly picks one as well. And we compare these two choices and we display the result. Let's choose scissors. And as you can see, we dynamically change the text. After I choose scissors, we display it, and the computer choose paper, and I win. I will choose rock, and now this time computer choose paper, and I lose. I will choose paper, and this time computer choose scissors, and I lost again. Now I choose rock, and computer choose rock as well, and it is a tie. So this video is mainly going to be a JavaScript video, but I will also explain the HTML and CSS part as well. So let's get into it. In my project folder, I created three files. This HTML file with the boilerplate. I link the style sheet, change the title to rock, paper, scissors. Also link the JavaScript file. And inside the CSS file, I reset the margin and padding. And you can choose whichever font you like. And inside the JavaScript file, it is empty for now. And I also opened this HTML file on the browser. So we will go part by part. First, I will create the HTML and then we will style it. And finally, we will create the functionality. So before we start, let's take a look at this finished version first and break it down. We have a wrapper that is centered in the page and everything inside this wrapper is basically stacked on top of each other. As you can see, we have this text, and right under it, there is another text. We have these three buttons, side by side, another two text, and we have this result box. Now, let's quickly create this. First, I will create the wrapper. Inside the wrapper, we will create a H1 at the top, rock, paper, scissors. Right under it, we will have a H3 with the choose text inside. We will have a div with the name choices. And I use a ID, not a class name. And inside this choices div, we will have three buttons. And for the buttons, I will use emojis. This first one is rock. The second one is paper. And third one is scissors. And under this choices div, we will have three more divs, player choice with the player text inside, computer choice, and the result. Now we completed the HTML part. We have the text, we have the buttons, we have the divs that we are going to dynamically change the text later. We will display the player choice, computer choice, and the result later. Now let's quickly style this as well. First, I will select the body, set its minimum height to 100 VH. I will center this wrapper using display flex and align item center, justify content center. And I will copy and paste this linear gradient background. If you wanna use the same background, just pause the video and type this down. And I will select the wrapper, set the background color to white. I will make this wrapper a flex container. And then I will change the flex direction to column to make every item inside stacked on top of each other. And align item center to center them. I will put some gap between. Let's create a gray border as well. And a little border radius. And some padding, 5EM at the top and the bottom and 3 em on the sides and let's select the h1 increase the font size select the h3 make the color this nice blue color and increase the font size and then i will choose this choices div i will set it to display flex to put the items side by side and then i will put some gap between them and then I will select the buttons inside of it. I will make them bigger using padding. 
set some border radius, increase the font size of the emojis, a transparent border for the hover effect, transition as well, and I will set the cursor to a pointer, and this will indicate that this is something clickable, and let's create the hover effect as well. When you hover over it, the background color is going to be white, border is going to be this nice blue color, and we will make it just a bit bigger using transform scale 1.05, and I will select the player choice and computer choice, increase the font size and font weight, and finally the result display. Let's make the text much bigger. A border. And the same amount of border radius. And some padding. And that should do it. The hover effect works. Everything is in the right place. And there is something wrong with this text. Let's see what it is. And oops, this should be player choice. And there you go. So now we finished the styling and the HTML part as well. We can go into creating the functionality. So the first thing that we are going to do is to select these divs and put them into variables. I will create a variable named player display. I will access the document and get that element by its ID. And it is player choice. And for the computer display, I will copy and paste this and change this to computer display. And this is going to be computer choice. And the final one is going to be result display. And now we have the variables that we are going to change the text when we update the player choice, computer choice, and the result. Now we can create the game logic. First of all, we need to create choices. And these choices are going to be inside of an array. The first one is going to be rock, second one, paper, and third one, scissors. And now we can use this array to pick choices and also make the computer pick a choice randomly as well. Let's create the game logic. I will create a function named game. And this game is going to take one argument, which is going to be player choice. And that basically means when you choose something, the game is going to get executed. So this function depends on your choice. First thing that we are going to do inside this function to create the logic for the computer's choice, which is going to be randomly picking one of these items inside this choices array. I will create a variable named computer choice, and I will select the choices div. And as you may know, arrays inside JavaScript are zero indexed. So this is not actually goes with one, two, and three. The first item is actually in the position of zero, and then first, and then second. So if I want to select rock, I need to put zero inside this choices array. Now basically this computer choice variable has the item rock inside of it. If I say one, now it has the paper inside of it. So basically what we need to do is to make this number change every time this function gets called. And the way that we are going to do is to use math.random. And we need to multiply this by three because math.random function gives you numbers between zero and one, but this still don't give us any whole numbers. And to make it a whole number, I will wrap this around math.floor. And now every time we choose something, and this function gets executed, this computer choice 
is going to be either 0, 1 or 2. So it is basically going to be randomly picking one of these items. Now the next thing that we are going to create is the result function. I will create a function named get result and this function will take two arguments player choice and computer choice because we are going to be comparing these two to decide who wins, who loses or if it's a tie. And to create that kind of logic we need to use if statements but instead of using if else I will use ternary operator so I quickly made this window a bit bigger so it's easy to see. So as I said, we will use ternary operators. So if the player choice is equal to computer choice, that means it is a tie. And if the player choice is equal to rock, and if the computer choice is equal to scissors or I will define another scenario now player choice is equal to paper and computer choice is equal to rock or player choice is equal to scissors and computer choice is equal to paper you will win and if any of these scenarios doesn't happen you lose so before I go to the next part let's do a quick recap of this because this might be confusing we created a function with two arguments player choice and computer choice because we basically compare these two to decide who wins or who loses and instead of using if else statements we used ternary operators which is basically the same thing it's just much shorter the first thing we checked is if the player choice and computer choice is equal if it's equal it is a tie and these three scenarios are basically the ones that you will win so if you pick rock and computer chooses scissors that means you win or the opposite of this happens you lose or this one happens you win or the opposite happens you lose this is why we defined three scenarios that you are going to win the opposite happens you lose and now we basically completed the game logic the only thing left is to display the results I will create a variable named result and using the get result function that we just created we will get the result And after we get the game's result inside this result variable, we will display it inside result display div, which is this one. We will basically going to change the text inside this div. So now we will access the text content and it is going to be equal to result. And I will use the same thing with the others, player display, text content, and computer display. These two are going to be displaying the choices so I will use backticks player and I will put the variable let's copy and paste this and change this to computer computer choice and one final thing to do is to change the styling of this result display so depending on if you win we will make the background green if you lose we make the background red and if it's a tie we make the background blue so I will access the style of this result display div and I will access the background color and it is going to be equal to if the result is it's a tie it is going to be blue and if the result is you win then it is going to be green and if you lose it is going to be red and I will also access the border element and make it 
2 pixel solid transparent and finally the text color is going to be white and now that we finished the game logic we need to put this game function inside these buttons to be able to call the function let's go back into index.html and inside these buttons we will create on click event handlers and then we will call the function game let's copy and paste this so this first one is going to be rock second one paper and third one scissors so now each time you click on these buttons you're basically going to call this function with these arguments so let's say i clicked on rock we will call the game function with the arguments of rock in this case player choice is going to be rock and then computer is going to be picking one of these three items as well and inside this get result function it is going to get compared to decide if you win or you lose or if it's a tie so let's see if it's working fine i will choose rock and the computer choose rock as well and it's a tie as you can see it works well now i will choose paper and the computer choose paper as well and it's a tie again i will choose scissors and the computer choose paper and i win so before i finish the video i will do a quick recap of this javascript code first we get these three html elements by their id and put them inside three variables and then we create an array of choices with the rock paper and scissors in it and we create the game logic using a function named game and this game function takes only one argument which is player choice that means this whole function depends on this one choice and inside the function first we create the logic for the computer choice which is basically creating a random number between 0 1 and 2 to be able to get one of these items randomly each time this function gets called and to decide what happens we create this get result function with this two arguments which is player choice and computer choice and inside the function we use ternary operator to decide if it's a tie or you win or you lose so if the player choice and the computer choice is equal that means it is a tie and if the player choice is rock and the computer choice is scissors that means you win and basically if any of these three scenarios happen that means you win and if any of the scenarios doesn't happen that means you lose next we get the result from this get result function and we put it inside this variable named result and then we display it inside this result display div and we also display the player's choice and the computer's choice as well using these variables and finally depending on the game result we change the background color of the result display in this example it's a tie and the background is blue and in this case i lost so the background color is red and in this case i won and the background color of the result display is now green and also we change the text color inside this result div to white as well and this is how you create a rock paper scissors game using html css and javascript i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you for your time and i will see you next time